Hi, this is Martha Hanlon from Wide Awake Business, and welcome to the Show Me How To section of the Customer Navigator. This is the section of your membership site where you can go in and find our quick hits, quick takes on insights that you want most from us, from us, from me, and from Chris. Uh, not only the insights that you've asked us the most about, but some things that Chris and I think that you probably want to know. And we're going to start with this session on how to know what your prospects want. Now that might seem for some of you a pretty obvious question. I often hear the fact that, well, my prospects are just like me and fill in the blank with whatever that means. But the truth of the matter is your prospects are not you. Your prospects are not experts in the area in which you operate in. They don't know as much about this area as you do. They're coming at things from a different perspective. So while they could be the same age, maybe you believe they have the same problem, the truth of the matter is they're not you. And the very first step that will enable you to know what your prospects want is to recognize your prospects aren't you and to begin to think like your customer. Get out of your head and get into the mind of your customer. Because as soon as you do that, you start thinking like them, you understand what's going through their heads, the faster you can do that, and I'm going to show you how, but the faster you can do that, the more you're converting from being the person who's selling something to offering something to someone who's going to buy it. Because the buying process and the selling process are two different things. So let's talk a little bit about how you can start to think like your customer. The first thing is, when you're thinking like your customer, you're going to know what their aspiration is. You're going to know that in the area in which you operate in, what are they trying to achieve? And I want to underline something here. In this whole section, we're not talking about you at all. They don't even know you exist. It's what is their aspiration in the area that you operate in. If you're a chiropractor, maybe around their health. If you're a business coach, maybe around the success of their business. If you're a tutor, maybe around the success of their child in learning or in school in education and going to college. What is their aspiration in the area in which you operate in? Not their aspiration with you. This is what they really want to achieve. And aspirations, there's really two types of aspirations. The first type is something that's, that's true, absolutely true, but it's a little bit more on the surface. So in my example here, a business owner could say, I want to make more money. That aspiration is completely and utterly true, but it's just sort of surface level. The second type of aspiration is much deeper, more emotional, and it is something that really is, it speaks to the soul and to the heart of your ideal customer, your prospect. Using that same example, they may want to make more money for their business so they can get out of debt. They may want to make more money in their business so that they can start to pay themselves for the reason they got into this business in the first place. That deeper, more emotional aspiration is their true driver. You can absolutely talk about make more money. It's true. You'll find more of your competition doing that than if you also start to recognize the other piece of aspiration that sits with your ideal customer. And that's their deeper, their driving motivator, that thing that's a little bit more emotional than the things that we find on the surface. So two kinds of aspirations. You want to know what both of them are. Now, just because your customer has an aspiration, there's almost always something standing in the way. There's an obstacle. There's a challenge. There's uh, an issue. There's something that's standing in their way of reaching their aspiration. Because if there wasn't something standing in their way, they would be on their way to achieving that aspiration or maybe even putting a check mark in that box. And they'd be going off to do something else. So the other part of learning to think like your customer is first to understand what their aspirations are in the area in which you operate. Remember, it's not their aspiration with you. The second piece is to understand the obstacles that they believe, that the customer believes, not you, you're the expert, you know fully the true obstacle. What's your customer's perception of their obstacle? And those obstacles come in three flavors. First, there are the obstacles that a prospect will say to you or someone like you when they first strike up a conversation. 
Now, I'm not going to share anything that's deep. I'm not going to embarrass myself. So if we're talking about our business person, what I might say is the obstacle for me to reach my goal of making more money is I've got to figure out how to get my team more involved. It's totally correct. It's an absolutely true statement. It's an obstacle that you want to know and understand, and it's something that your client will say out loud. The second kind of obstacle is key. The things that they won't say to someone like you when they first meet you, and they won't say them because it's deep, because maybe it's embarrassing, because they're not ready to reveal themselves to you yet, but the reason that you must know what these obstacles are that they won't say out loud is because it runs the show. It's running through their heads, and as it runs through their heads, it's controlling their behavior. So if I come back to our business person, something that they won't say is, I want to make more money, I, I want to get out of debt because I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed in front of my family and my friends. I said I was going to be successful at this business, and I'm not. Or I, I've tried everything that I know how. I've done everything I possibly can, everything that anyone's told me to, and I still can't figure out, I can't turn that corner. You want to know the things that they believe are their obstacle that they won't say because you can say them. You can say them when you're standing up and speaking. You can say them on your website. You can say them in all of your material because that customer knows you're listening and you understand who they are and what's going on for them. The third kind of obstacle is a little bit trickier to understand. It's something they cannot say. I'm going to come back to this idea that you are the expert. And as the expert, you probably know the real, true problem that stands in their way, whereas your customer, who's not the expert, may not. And let me give you an example to help you understand what this agnostic is all about. I have a coaching client I've worked with for a while who is a young woman who does financial planning for folks who are just getting married or maybe moving in together for the first time. And she kept going to market talking about repairing their credit rating, repairing their credit rating, and repairing their credit rating, and nothing was happening or not enough was happening. Well, part of the problem was because her ideal customers can't say that the reason they couldn't get the car or the reason that they are stuck with, the, with a mortgage that they can't get is because they don't know that their credit rating is bad. No one's told them that that's the obstacle that's standing in their way. So when she went out and started marketing, talking to people about what they cannot say, hey, let me repair your credit rating, it wasn't speaking to that younger generation because that wasn't what was on their mind. What was on their mind is how can I get the car, how can I get the house? So you want to know all three kinds of obstacles. The What they will say, you're going to say them out loud, it's important to be able to recognize that. What they won't say, the things that rule their behavior that you can indeed talk about, and the things they cannot say, you're going to stay away from, because if you're talking about it and they don't care, they're not paying attention to you. Now, the question that might be going through your mind is, Martha, how am I going to know any of this stuff? Well, the answer is, listen. Listen. If you've been in business for a while, trust me, your prospects have been saying these things to you, around you if you're at an event. Listen. Pay attention to the language that they use. Write it down if you have to. Don't translate it. Write it down exactly as they say it. And if you're just starting your business, put yourself in the presence of the prospect that you are targeting, the one that you really want to work with. Understand, I mean, ask them some questions. Maybe not so obvious as what are your aspirations and what are your obstacles, but you can figure out a nice gentler way of asking those same things. Listen to their answers. They'll tell you in so many ways, and they may not tell you the things they won't say, right? They're just getting to know you, but they'll tell their friends. You'll be able to hear and figure it out as you go. So for you to understand what your customer, what your prospect wants, understand you're getting out of your head, you're going to think like your customer, and the two key things to be thinking about that enable you to think like your customer is what is their aspiration in the area in which you operate, not their aspiration with you, and what is the obstacle standing in the way of reaching their aspiration, not their obstacle in saying yes to you, their obstacle in reaching that aspiration. You do those things, and you are on your way to thinking like your customer.